friends, I'm Valeria at Chase and Paper. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you how I make beautiful faux leather out of an ordinary lunch bag. I am going to play with my embossing machine today, but if you, my friends, don't have an embossing machine, that's totally fine because I am going to show you a second technique on how to make this beautiful leather without an embossing machine. And that is actually a very easy, simple, and short process. And then we are going to make a couple of projects with our newly made embossed leather. Please let me know in the comments if you ever made full leather before. And if you think you are going to give this process a try. Before we begin, could you please make sure to give my video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, make sure to hit that bell button so that you are notified as soon as my new video comes out. And please share this video with a friend or two. Now let me show what we are going to be making today out of a paper bag. So this is a little folio. It opens up like so. And it has a little pocket here on the bottom. And we have some ephemera and stickers inside. Very pretty. This is what the back looks like. A very simple concept, yet really beautiful, easy to make. And it makes a perfect addition to any junk journal or a great addition to your happy mail. Something beautiful to send to your friend. And we are going to make this pocket size wallet junk journal. I call them wallet junk journals because they remind me of a wallet. And I really like this format. I've really been enjoying these. And this cover is made with faux leather that we made without the use of any embossing machine. So there you go. If you don't have an embossing machine, please know that this is something you can make right now, today, as long as you have a brown paper bag on hand. So let's take a closer look. It has an elastic closure, which is really easy to operate. And it has a vintage button. Inside, we have a variety of really beautiful papers, wonderful textures, vellum, all different papers. Perfect for taking notes, taking with you on vacation, great for collaging. So many wonderful uses for this journal. But you can make one and give it to a friend as a gift. Just a beautiful little journal that you can make really simply with supplies you already have on hand. And just so you know, once this video is published, I am going to put this journal and the folio as a bundle in my Etsy shop. I'm going to link my Etsy shop below. So come on over and check it out. You never know what you may find. So what do you say? Are you ready to see how to make this beautiful leather? Great, let's begin. I am going to start with the regular brown lunch bag. You can pick them up at the Dollar Tree. Very inexpensive. Uh, they are basically thin brown paper bags. I am opening up the bottom. I'm going to be as careful and as gentle as I possibly can be. And now I'm going to find the seam on my bag, which is right here on the back side. And I'm just going to unseal it. Now I'm getting rid of all these flaps. I'm using my ruler and I'm just going to tear. You can use your scissors or your ruler, whatever you like. Now I tore this bag into sections because for this first technique I'm going to be using my embossing folders and I know how wide they are so I know I cannot work with a very wide piece of paper so these strips should work a lot better. Next I'm going to get my tea bags. Next I'm getting my Mod Podge. This is a glossy Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge you can absolutely use PVA glue and water it down. I transferred some of my Mod Podge in a dish and I added a little bit of water. Now I'm going to use a sheet protector underneath just to protect my table. And I'm actually going to tear the edges on these tea bags because we're going to have to overlap them. So I'm just going to give them a torn edge. So now I'm coming in with my Mod Podge and I'm adding a nice thin layer of Mod Podge. To my paper bag 
And now I am adding my tea bags. I am going to overlap them. I'm going to use a little sandwich bag and put my hand inside and I'm going to smooth it out. And the reason I'm using this bag is because it's not sticking to the plastic bag. The Mod Podge is staying exactly where it needs to stay and my fingers are not going to be sticky. I'm smoothing it out, but I'm leaving some wrinkles. I'm totally okay with them. In fact, they are going to add some beautiful texture to our project. And now I'm going to add another layer of Mod Podge. All done. And now I'm going to set this aside to dry. While it's drying, I'm going to repeat this process on a couple more sheets of camera. And here we go, you guys. It comes right off. It has a really nice, beautiful texture and has a really great feel to it as well. And now I am getting my embossing machine. My embossing machine is Sizzix Big Shot. You may have a different embossing machine and that is totally fine. And I chose these two embossing folders to create my texture. Now these folders are pretty narrow and they are not going to fit the whole sheet in one go. So now I am just cutting it down to make sure it fits into the folder. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these pieces up to make sure they fit. Now let's go ahead and place it in the folder. Now when I open my folder, my raised side is going to be right here. You can feel it with your fingers. So find the raised side in your folder and put the unfinished side of the paper down like this. Now to achieve better results with my machine, I actually like to mist it just a little bit. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to use my spray bottle with water to spray it very lightly, just a couple of spritzes. And I'm spritzing my back side of the paper. Again, closing my folder. Now we have to create our embossing sandwich with our platforms. So what I found for these particular bags and for my embossing folders, what works good for me is I'm putting down my platform, then I'm putting my embossing folder, and then I found then adding one of these cutting plates on top actually works really well and creates that perfect tension. Now your embossing sandwich may vary because as you know, it depends greatly on what kind of an embossing folder you're using. It depends on thickness of your paper, even on how thick your layer of Mod Podge is, right? Because that adds to the thickness. You want to make sure that there is a nice and tight squeeze, okay? I'm starting to put it through the machine and you want to make sure that it kind of, you feel the tension. See that? Now I'm going to put that once again. And let's take a look. We have a beautiful texture. Let's go ahead and repeat. Once again, I'm finding my raised side, putting my unfinished side onto that raised side, kind of flipping it open. I'm going to add this piece of fabric underneath my folder this time just to add a little more tension because I feel like it could help with getting even a better texture. You just have to play with your machine and find what you need to add to create that perfect tension. And let's see what we have. Once again, we have a beautiful texture. And here is the beautiful texture that I was able to achieve with my second folder. 
I repeated that same exact process and I hope the camera is picking it up. It really is beautiful. So here we have all our beautiful pieces and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the edges. Here they are, our beautiful textures, but we are going to take it to the next level. I want to amplify my embossing so that all these beautiful flowers and vines really pop. And for that, I am going to use my Stazon ink in Timber Brown. It doesn't have to be Stazon ink. You can use your Distress inks if you like. I prefer Stazon because it's going to stay in place and I feel like it adds kind of a darker finish. It's totally up to you. I'm going to show you the results with both. So I'm using Stazon first in Timber Brown and I am going to run the pad lightly over the surface and look at that isn't that pretty i think it just amplified my embossing beautifully now let's try our distress ink in walnut stain color just so you can see the difference so this gives a bit more of a subtle finish but i don't know i kind of like it as well just a slightly different look, but it's beautiful, nevertheless. Distress ink on the left, stays on on the right. Let's repeat with the rest of our papers. So yeah, you guys experiment with whatever inks you have on hand and find what you like best. Now here we have our beautiful panels. I added some ink to all of them. They look really good already. And now I'm going to add a final touch. I am going to use deco foil to add some gold accents and you guys you do not need any kind of a special hot foiling machine I'm just going to use my favorite scotch permanent glue stick now not all glue sticks are created equal some glue sticks work for this and some don't I tried now I know scotch permanent glue stick works and this yuho glue stick also works but I do like Scotch Permanent Glue Stick a little better. I am going to run my glue stick lightly over the raised parts of our paper. I got one sheet of foil out of the package and I'm placing it down right where I just put some glue stick and the gold foil side is facing me. I'm going to press it down you can use your hand. I like using a napkin. And now after a few seconds, I'm going to lift the foil off. We have a very subtle gold accent. It really looks beautiful in person. I'm going to repeat with the other sections of this panel and just look how beautiful that looks. I did not add gold foil to all of them just because some of them I like to use just the way they are. I'm covering it up completely with my glossy Mod Podge. And I'm going to let it dry. So there you go, my friends. This is our first technique. And now let's move on to our second technique, which is not going to use any embossing machine nor embossing folders. So anyone can do it. Now for my next technique, I'm going to work with a brown paper bag once again. We are going to create a slightly different look, but still a very beautiful texture. I'm going to begin the same way we did before. I'm going to unseal the bottom, unseal the seam in the back of the bag, and then I'm going to cut off all the unsightly flaps. And this is what I'm left with. Now, because we are not going to work with any embossing folders this time, I don't have to cut it into sections. I'm going to leave this as a big sheet just as is. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to crumple it up. I'm opening it up and I'm admiring all these beautiful wrinkles and I am going to scrunch it up again. And that's going to help me create a lot more beautiful wrinkle patterns. And I will open it up again.
and you can repeat this process until your paper is completely wrinkled. The more wrinkles, the better. Now I'm going to add some color and dimension to my paper. I am going to use this Distress Oxide in the color Vintage Photo. Now I'm going to scrunch it up one more time just to get a new wrinkle pattern on my paper. And I'm going to use my Stay Zone ink in Timber Brown. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some gold foil accents. And I'm going to work in small sections. And you guys probably noticed that we did not add any tea bags to this paper. Now that's for two reasons. First, those bags really would prevent me from getting all this beautiful wrinkly texture. I do need a lot more wrinkles on this one since we are not adding any interest with embossing, right? So we need to get all our texture and all our interest from the wrinkles. And the tea bags wouldn't help me with that. And the second reason for not adding tea bags is that um, I don't need to strengthen my paper. I will not need to make my paper thicker because it is not going to be going through the embossing machine. When we are putting something through the embossing machine, there is always that concern that um, our paper is going to tear. Well, I don't have that concern here, so I do not need to add that extra layer. Now, after finishing adding my gold foil accents, I went ahead and added one layer of gloss Mod Podge on top just to seal all the colors. Now also another reason I use this Mod Podge is not only it's helping us to create that leathery texture and look, but also if you remember, we used our Distress Oxide, not Distress Ink as a base coat. Distress Oxides are designed to move and kind of spread out throughout your paper when the paper gets wet. And since Mod Podge is a wet medium, it really helped us spread the colors and create this darker, uh, more unique look. And it looks more like a leather. So very similar project, yet a little bit different look. Oh, and by the way, just a quick tip. Before you begin working with all your inks, it might be a good idea to wear your gloves unless you want to have all your fingers ink stained, just like mine. It's okay, it's not the end of the world though. They're totally going to wash out. Or at least that's what I'm hoping for. So now that we made all this paper, you are probably wondering, well, what can I do with it? So we are going to make something really pretty and I'm going to give you some ideas of what you could use your new paper for. The possibilities with these are endless and you can make cards with them, you can make bookmarks, you can make pockets, writing cards, tags, junk journal covers. So let's try a couple of things. I'm going to work with this piece first and we are going to make a fun folio. My folio is going to be roughly the size of an index card, so I'm going to use this index card for sizing. First of all, I am going to cut down my piece to be as wide as the index card. Now I'm going to cut this piece in half. Now that we have these two pieces, let's just put them aside for now. And I'm going to work on the base of my folio. So what I have here is a double-sided piece of scrapbooking paper. This is entirely too big. I just like the way it looks. You can use scraps or a book page, or you could totally use coffee dyed paper. Anything works. Now, if you're working with anything that has text on it, so your paper is directional, what you want to do is you want to flip it over so that your text is upside down. So now that our text is upside down on the back side, I'm going to go ahead and mark right here the size of my index card. And I'm going to only work with this part of the page. So I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to slide this index card and I'm going to move it up maybe about an inch and a half. 
And now I'm going to fold this paper up like that. And now I'm going to bring this part of the paper down like that. And now I'm going to mark it. So I see the size and I'm going to cut it just a little bit shorter than the mark I just made. So this is the base of our folio. This part is going to create a pocket and this is going to be like a cover. Now these two pieces, I'm going to use them as a side tabs. So because they're so thin and the back side isn't exactly that pretty, I'm going to back them with the remaining piece of scrapbooking paper. I'm going to use my art glitter glue. And the reason I'm kind of struggling here to fit them onto the same piece of paper is because I really want to use up this beautiful piece of my scrapbooking paper. But that's not necessary, especially if you're working with just a book page or coffee dyed paper, there's plenty of that. Now that my glue is dry, I'm going to go ahead and cut these two pieces apart. So we're back to square one, we still have our two pieces, only now they're backed with scrapbooking paper, so they have a lot more substance to them. And now we're going to make them sort of into tags that are going to be folded and keeping our folio closed. So I'm going to put them together and cut two corners to make sort of a tag shape. using my corner to get exactly the same shape on the other side and cut. I'm going to take each of these tags and I'm going to fold about half an inch to an inch. We are creating a hinge. Now that we have these two hinged tabs, I'm going to go ahead and glue them inside right here. And I'm putting some glue on the flap right here. And I'm attaching it right here. I'm moving it a little bit to the left so that the fold can fold comfortably. Moving it to the right side just a little bit. There. And now our tabs are attached and they are functioning. Now let's go ahead and cover up this part right here. I'm going to use our paper once again. Now I'm inking the edge with my Distress Oxide in the color Gather Twigs. And I'm going to use my Scotch glue stick to glue this piece down. Now I'm going to add a little bit of ink to the top edge of the pocket before I glue it closed. Once again, I am using my art glitter glue for precision and a really strong hold and I'm putting a little bit of glue on the sides here and here and I'm closing that pocket. Now I'm going to round the corners on my top flap. And now that my corners are rounded, I am going to ink it all around. Now let's go ahead and put holes in our tabs. And now I will use my Crapadile Big Bite. There. Now I'm going to set this gold brass eyelets. Our eyelids are set. I really like the way it looks, but I also want to add some gold accents to this front cover, just to bring our gold accents in and kind of tie it all together. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here and there. 
putting my gold foil on here. Letting it rest a couple of seconds. And now I'm peeling it. Beautiful, we got a little bit of gold. And I'm gonna add a little along the bottom edge. And I'm peeling it off. And maybe just a little bit in the back. And I'm peeling it. Great. Now I'm going to add some fun ephemera to our pocket. This little bingo card and this little postcard sticker and this little piece of ephemera there. And I'm going to use my gold cord as a closure. I'm threading my cord through these holes, bringing it in together. And there we have it. I think it turned out really beautiful. Very simple, very quick. It would be fun to discover in a junk journal or a lot of fun to send to a friend as a happy mail. Now let's make something else. Now I want to make something with our big piece of leather. And I am going to make one of my favorite styles of junk journals, which is, I call it a wallet journal. It's very quick and simple to make. It's very beginner friendly and it's so practical. It fits in your handbag, it fits in your pocket. Let's get to it. Now, because this paper is very thin and is not suitable for a cover as is, I am going to use this manila folder for a base. My journal is going to measure approximately six inches long by four inches tall. So that means I need to start with a base that's going to measure approximately 12 inches long and four inches tall. So I'm opening my folder and I am measuring four inches down from the top and um, drawing a line. Now this is way too long, so we're going to make it shorter. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to mark it at about six inches, which is right around here. Putting that corner to the other side, just to get the same exact corner on the other side, like that. So now I'm going to glue our paper onto our cover, flipping that over. You can use any glue you like. I'm using my Scotch permanent glue stick. I do not want to use Mod Podge because I feel like I used enough Mod Podge for a week now. <laughs> I'm not a huge Mod Podge fan, but sometimes there are tasks that only Mod Podge can handle. This is not one of them. And here we go. I am putting it down and I'm making sure that there is a nice margin on all sides because I'm going to be wrapping our paper leather all around the cover. Now I'm cutting my leather off and I'm leaving about half an inch margin all around. I'm going to wrap my corners first, just working with the left side for now. And now I'm adding just a little bit of glue right here. And I'm putting that down like that. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And there we have it. That looks beautiful. Looks like a leather journal cover, doesn't it? And we are going to add lining. And now I'm going to glue this lining down. And down it goes. I'm going to retrain the crease. So I'm folding it in half again. I added this portrait to the cover just to add a little bit of character and dimension. I used my art glitter glue to affix it to the cover. And now we can go ahead and add our pages. And here's my pile of papers. This is going to be a very eclectic journal. This is also perfect for using your scraps if you have scraps because the journal is so small you can use your off cuts as pages. 
And so here I have all my pages folded together. They fit this way, but they are too long coming this way. So I'm going to adjust that. So I am going to push them all where they need to be. And I'm going to clip them all together to make sure they stay in place. And now I'm going to use my ruler and my craft knife. I am going to go very slow and cut them all to the same size. And this is going to take several times. So just go slow until all your pages are cut. And that's the last of it. I am going to cut the corners as well. I'm going to draw a line, working slowly in layers until we take all these corners off. All right, let's check the fit one more time. And it's a beautiful fit. Here's the last chance to decide whether we want to use a sewing machine and go around the edge or not. I added a little zigzag stitch all around the cover. And now I'm ready to stitch my pages in. Here are the pages. I'm going to place them right here in the center. And now I'm going to take my awl and I'm going to put three holes through all my pages and the cover. First hole in the center. And again, I'm working slowly because that's a lot of pages. Now I'm going up just a little bit and I'm piercing my second hole. Now I'm going to pierce my third hole. There we are. And I'm going to work with a really large needle. I'm going into my middle hole right here. I'll come out in the back. Make sure you don't lose your tail. You can even put your clip binder at the end to make sure that you don't lose it. Now I'm going to my top hole on the spine and I'm putting my needle through the cover and through all the pages. And we come out in the center right here. And now I'm going to the bottom hole through all the pages and the cover. And I come out on the outside of our spine once again. And now I am going to return to my middle hole right here and put my needle through the cover and through all the pages. And we come out right in the center. There. And now I am pulling to make it tight right over left and left over right and i'm snipping off the ends and there we have it our beautiful booklet is put together now i want to turn my attention back to the cover i want to cover my spine and for that i'm going to use this beautiful fabric because the placement on the front is really important to me. I am going to start on the front right here and place my fabric exactly where I want it to be on the front. And now that I'm happy with that placement, I am going to open my journal and proceed attaching the fabric to the back. Now for the actual closure, I really want to use this vintage gold button that I had. Now this area of course is going to get a lot of wear, so we have to reinforce it. I am going to cut another small piece of that same fabric we just used. And now I'm going to use my Fabrifix glue to attach this piece to the front cover only. and gluing my piece right here and i'm going to sew on this button just pretty much the same way as you would attach a button to a coat or a short i'm coming in 
from the inside of the cover going on to the outside and I'm going to pull it through all the way until it stops at my knot right here. I'm putting my needle through the shank on this button and now I'm putting another hole in the cover kind of right next to the first one and I'm pulling my thread. And now I'm going to repeat. I did it three times with a very strong thread and I feel that this button is nice and secure. So now I am going to finish it off by making a little knot here, pulling it through. The knot is secure. I'm going to snip it off and I'm going to snip off these threads right here. And now this loose flap of fabric, we are going to glue it over to cover that up. Now I am going to add two holes with eyelets to the back cover. Now I'm going to use some thin black elastic cord. I am going to take my two ends open my journal and I'm going to go from the inside and I'm putting one end in each hole like that. And now I am going to find just the right amount of tension so that my journal stays closed and my elastic is stretched. But at the same time, I want to make sure that we have room to grow because once we add pockets and ephemera, this journal is going to get thicker. So this looks like a good place to start. Yep. And I found these two purple glass beads and I am going to add them to the ends. So I am putting my end of the cord through and I am going to tie it off on the end right here. And now that I tied that little knot on the end, I am going to use my Aline's Juliet glue and I'm going to put a tiny little bit of glue on that knot. And now I am going to push that knot inside the bead and now I'm going to go ahead and cut the cord and there we have it we have a little bead on the end once the glue is dry it's going to be nice and secure I wouldn't recommend tugging on the bead on purpose but with normal regular wear it's going to last and I'm going to do the same thing to the other end and there we have it here are the beads I think it turned out really pretty. I also went ahead and added just a touch of color with my alcohol markers. I kind of color tinted her whole picture just a little bit. And our beautiful journal is ready for you to enjoy. And so there we go, my friends. We made beautiful full leather out of an ordinary brown paper lunch bag. And we made a beautiful little journal and a folio. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with a friend and your crafting group. Also, please let me know in the comments which one of these projects you like better, and let me know if you think you're going to give any of these projects a try. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I can't wait to see you next time.